Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the night of the world premiere of Just Mercy, the new film by Destin Daniel Cretton. Thank you so much for being here to be a part of that. To begin, we want to acknowledge where we are. We are on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Huron-Wendat. And we're grateful to be working in this community. A reminder that this film and every film in the festival is eligible for the Grolsch People's Choice Award. There's only one way we know who wins, and that's by you voting. So please don't forget to vote. You can go online to tiff.net slash vote and vote for your favorite film. Big thanks to Warner Brothers Pictures for providing us with this film and for a big year this year at the festival for all of their work. This is the latest film by a remarkable filmmaker. He made a short film uh, called Short Term 12, which won the jury prize at Sundance in 2008. He then made his feature debut at Sundance with I'm Not a Hipster in 2012 and went on to direct a feature version of Short Term 12 in 2013. And that was the first time I discovered his work and was really impressed. He also had an actor by the name of Brie Larson in that film. And turns out they have struck up a long-term working relationship. He also made The Glass Castle in 2017, and this is his latest film. All right, Glass Castle fans. Um, we saw this film uh, several weeks ago, and uh, it really slowed our day down, because not because of the film, don't get me wrong. The film is fantastic, and it moves at a clip, but it slowed our day down because we had to recover from watching this movie. We were emotionally just hit. There was a wallop to it. I'm not gonna lie, there were people who had to kind of just hide out in the bathroom and cry for a while. And then we were talking about it for a long time afterwards, and it's just that kind of movie. We were just so moved by this film. It's based on a true story, the story of a remarkable man, Brian Stevenson, and the work that he's been doing and continues to do in the US. And Destin Cretton pulled together a remarkable team to tell Brian Stevenson's story, including Brie Larson, again, Jamie Foxx, who was at the festival several years ago with a film called Ray, where he played Ray Charles to remarkable effect, and also an actor by the name of Michael B. Jordan. And I hope that you love the film as much as I do. It is one of the strongest uh, films I've seen all year. And uh, I'm so glad that Destin Cretton has brought the film to Toronto to you to make the world premiere tonight. And he's here to introduce it to you. Please join me in welcoming Destin Daniel Cretton. How's everybody doing? Um, one of my favorite moments of going to a film festival is the moment right now when there's so much anticipation and you have no idea what you're about to see. I'm gonna let you sit in that for a little bit. Um, the other really exciting thing about watching a movie that, at a film festival is you don't know who you're sitting next to. And there are a lot of people in this room who actually worked on this movie. And I'd, if you indulge me, I'd love to just thank them. This might be my only opportunity. Um, I'd like to start with our producers. I'm just gonna say first names because you guys are all my friends. Gil, Asher, Michael B. Jordan. Um, this was, as a director, you know, producers, it's, it's hard to define, but they are the, the fighters and the most passionate people to keep a movie alive from the very beginning when nobody believes in it all the way to the end. So thank you guys. Um, all of our executive producers and partners, participant, macro, one community, uh, Warner Brothers, Toby, Courtney, Nigel, Blair, JP, Tara, Michelle, Courtney, Courtney, you guys, uh, it's, it's so amazing working with a studio that really cares. And 
That is something that everybody who worked on this movie, they have a love for Brian Stevenson and his story that goes so deep and we feel it. We feel so loved by that studio. Um, our co-writer, uh, Andrew Lanham, is in the house. Uh, we have a couple actors who we will not be able to bring on stage till the end, but uh, Hayes and Alphonse, you are here and we love you. You have done such amazing work in this movie. Um, our, our production team slash family, led by Mike Drake, Brett Pollock, Sharon Seymour, Amber, Joy, Brian G, Jenny Lee, we love you. Our post-production crew, Nat Sanders, Joel P. West, Autumn Adele, and friends, thank you so much. Now I'm gonna make you all stand. Please stand if you, even if I missed you, I'm so sorry, I don't know exactly who's here, but if you participated in this movie, please stand and help me recognize them. Don't be shy. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Now, uh, I'm going to call out some other people. Um, th this is from my mom. Uh, I, I grew up in Hawaii, and my my younger brother Brooke and his, and my sister-in-law Summer just flew in from Maui, and my mom made this like a day ago, so it's fresh. Um, I I would like to introduce our our cast, who you are about to meet on screen. Um, I always think it's so cool to see the faces of the people you're about to see just before. Uh, Karen Kendrick, please come out. Okay. O'Shea Jackson, the second. Tim Blake Nelson. Rob Morgan. Isn't that suit amazing? Brie Larson. Maybe we should do like a split so everyone can see you. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Jamie Foxx. Michael B. Jordan. Um, I, I have a two year, my wife and I have an almost two year old son. And um, sometimes it's hard thinking about the world that we are leaving him. And it can be overwhelming uh, sometimes it can feel hopeless, but there is somebody that does give me incredible hope for the future of our world, not only for the work that he has done, but for the spirit that he represents. <laughs> Whew. Um, he inspires all of us on this stage to push forward with hope and love 
in the face of a lot of work that we have to do. Thank you for all that you have done for all of us. This is Brian Stevenson. Thank you. Um, so this is just an incredibly exciting moment for all of us, but it's a particularly exciting moment for me because for 35 years I have been going into jails and prisons and trying to persuade the world uh, that you are more than the crime you commit, that people who have fallen down still have humanity and basic rights that it's wrong to treat them unfairly, that it's wrong to abuse, that it's wrong to not care about equality and fairness. And I've gone on to death row for, for three decades, and I've worked with children prosecuted as adults, and I've seen the suffering and the trauma, and I've seen this horrific problem of over-incarceration and excessive punishment take over uh, things in the United States. And I sit down with 13-year-old kids who tell me that they expect to be in jails and prisons by the time they're 21, and I've been worried about what our indifference to inequality and injustice does to all of us. And so I wrote the book and I wasn't really sure what would happen. And then these extraordinary talented people came along and said that they were going to find ways to get this message out. And I'm so excited uh, because these extraordinary talented people have brought humanity to the lives of the condemned. They've brought the power and the truth of what it means to live in the margins of society and still be caring and still be trying to make a difference. And we get to present it to the world and that's what excites me more than anything else. There's a justice deficit in this country of Canada and the United States all over the planet. We've got to do something about that. And I think if we learn more and we know more, we will do more, we'll actually demand more. And I think we can create a more just society. We just have to motivate ourselves to do it. And we hope this film, uh, motivate you. We hope you find that it. it's brilliantly made because it is, and Destin is a brilliant filmmaker. We hope you, you see the performances that are extraordinary because there are some extraordinary performances, but we hope you'll also feel the truth we're trying to tell, which is that we have to have more justice. We have to have more fairness. We cannot ignore those who are impoverished and marginalized. And so it, it's incredibly exciting. And so thank you for being here for the film and we hope you enjoy the movie. Thanks very much. Wow. Wow, indeed. <laughs> it's an incredible, emotional, powerful story. But it's not just that it's a true story, although it is that. It's also that it takes the art, the craft of everybody on this stage to tell a story that will 
move this audience to their feet. I imagine some of you to tears as well. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> Destin, I want to start with you. If you could just talk a little bit about what drew you to the true story, to Brian's story, and, and how you decided to tell it in the way that you did and to, to, to make it this emotional piece that it, that it truly is. Um, I, got, I got the book handed to me by our producer, Gil Netter, um, and I read it in a coffee shop, uh, and I could not put it down. And there was probably a lot of people who thought I was a very emotional person because I was bawling my eyes out in this coffee shop and laughing um, at so many moments and, and filled with so much devastation. And when I got to the last page of the book, I was suddenly filled with so much hope and inspiration and energy. And the first time I met Brian, um, it, it was just so in, instant that I, I realized all of those words and those, those things that, those, that he believes are infused into his veins. And he is the definition of integrity. Um, and I, 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 I just look up to him so much. It was that, that's why this was the scariest thing I've ever done. And it's, uh, this reaction is amazing. And Brian, when you see what you lived through and the work that you've done up on the big screen with an audience, a thousand people in the room with you, what go through, go, goes through your mind? What's in your heart? Well, it's, it's really uh, emotional because uh, all of these amazing, talented people um, gave not just performances, but they gave their hearts to this story. Um, y you know, it's the humanity, the dignity of people who have been thrown away that gets forgotten. It's what allows us to be abusive. It's what allows us to be unjust. It's what allows us to tolerate the things we shouldn't tolerate. And we won't change that until we begin to understand we're talking about human beings, we're talking about human dignity, we're talking about basic human rights, and all of these talented people make it a little easier to see what's at stake when we tolerate injustice, what we lose when we put up with inequality, what we suffer when we uh, permit discrimination and bigotry to rule and shape our lives. We have been governed by fear and anger in too many places in the world, and we've got to fight against that. We've got to find ways to revive hope, to revive justice, to revive love for human beings. And we can't do it when we just throw people away. And I think it becomes easier when you get the full picture. And Michael's performance, and Bree's performance, and Jamie's performances, and Rafe's performance, and Tim's performances, and everybody's performance, O'Shea, everyone, Karen, make it a little bit easier for us to see what's at stake when we tolerate inequality and injustice. And for me, it's emotional because being in a space like that, this, and seeing people respond to it, get it, gives me a great deal of hope. I live and work in Alabama. I'm going back there where I'm still fighting for people who are wrongly convicted and condemned. But I fight with a little bit more energy. All of us at EJI can fight with a little bit more energy knowing that we are being supported by some of the most talented people on the planet and they're on this stage and hopefully we'll be supported by people like you. And that's what gives me great excitement about what we can do to create more justice. Thank you. Let's talk. Let's talk about those performances that you mentioned and maybe we can start with Michael, Jamie, Bree. You have played larger than life characters, superheroes, supervillains. What is it like to tell a true story through your performance when you know that what you are putting on screen and every gesture is really based on people who, who are living and breathing? Uh, it was, um... he's a real life superhero, you know? Um... Yeah. 
And for me, it was very intimidating. You know, at first, I think uh, after I got a chance to really get to know him and his story and his work, it was, uh, I felt like I had a great deal of pressure, you know, to, uh, to get it right, you know. Um, I know it was a group effort um, between all of us to, to make sure we, we paid attention to every detail, that we, that, that we were as accurate as possible, that we embodied what, what Brian represents, what EJI represents, what, you know, what he's trying to do. And, um, and I felt honored, you know, to be able to, to carry that weight. I felt honored to be able to get up on this, you know, on, on set every day, to go to work every day and, and, and try, you know, try to make a difference, try to, to uh, be a part of that change. Um, and I know I had like-minded people, like, like-minded, like, uh, and I like hearts every day, you know, going to work. It was one of my mo- most enjoyable um, experiences that I've had so far. And I get emotional thinking about it because I really, truly believe that this is going to help, you know, help him, help him, uh, you know, fight the fight that he's been doing. And uh, I'm mean, just, you know, incredibly honored, kind of lost for words, to be perfectly honest. Jamie or Bree, whoever wants to go next. All right, Jamie. He keeps handing me the mic because he's not ready to talk, I don't think. So I'll stall for you, man. Okay. That's what I'm here for. Um, it, this, this story is so incredible. And um, to, be, to be able to be an ally to these incredible performances um, was an opportunity that I'm just so grateful for. It was brought to me, of course, by, by Destin, spoke to me about it first, and he's my family, and I would do anything. I would go into the darkness for him anytime. But really, the, the question was, does, does Michael want me there? Because my only role in this was to support. That's all I, that's, that's the true definition of supporting role in this, was I just wanted to be there for him. And to be given the opportunity to hold space for him was one of the most incredible experiences of my my working life. And we shared moments that mean so much to me. And uh, this story is so powerful. Brian's voice is so powerful. The people up here have, like Michael said, just the most beautiful hearts. Every day was a treat. And um, I got to learn so much. I, I got to learn how to be a better person, a better ally, um, a better advocate, not just by learning more about Eva, learning more about EGI, learning more about the folks that are on the ground doing this fight every day, but also from getting to know these people. And, and I want to give credit to Jamie as well for leading really important conversations that we were having when the cameras weren't rolling. And... I felt so honored the entire time to be included in that and for these people to feel safe being around me Um, and also to Destin for facilitating safe spaces. Uh, It was just a really, really wonderful experience for me personally and it just fills my heart up to see that that came through and that you all feel it too. It, it, doesn't this feel good? Um, I'm just humbled to be up here. I'm humbled to be, when Michael called me about this, I said, man, I'll be humbled, I'll be honored. Um, meeting Michael, meeting Destin, meeting Brian, and um, them asking me to, to get into the body and the skin of Walter McMillan, which any black man will tell you especially from the South, I come from, I'm from Texas. So I understood a lot of things before we even started. I understood what it was to be called or a nigger or have it blatantly said to you or just a matter of fact. I come from a small town in Texas, uh, population 12,000 people, Terrell, Texas, probably fit in this, uh, in this theater. Uh, <laughs> And, and, I, and I was giving them sort of like the history when we took this on of what I come from, the racial undertones or overtones. 2008, there was a young man by the name of uh, Barack Obama. I don't know if you heard about him. And if there's any indication. Um, 
<laughs> I mean, how can you not not hear about him? But in my town, Terrell, Texas, only 12,000 people. The uh, newspaper is only six pages. So whether you voted for him or not, it's a keepsake, right? So everybody rushed to the newspaper to get the newspaper to see uh, this incredible feat. He was not on the front of our newspaper. Um, sad, but true. Uh, when CNN came down to interview our newspaper, said, hey, listen, we run a newspaper, not a scrapbook. So when I was talking to Destin about where I come from, I understand what Ma Walter McMillan is feeling. I understand what it is even now and today if I'm driving in my nice car in my nice neighborhood and I see that police officer, it still makes me feel like something could happen. Not to demonize all police officers, but I still feel that. Uh, in this movie, you watch Walter McMillan, who's, like I always said, I'm just born. I had no way to change how I was going to come out. I was born this way. So when you see somebody hate you for or not like you because of the the way you were born, that's a tough thing to do. And you know how rare it is to be born? I mean, like, you get a chance to live, and all of us, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you finally get a chance to live it, and all of a sudden, it gets snatched away from you. And uh, you've seen all of these, these beautiful performances up here, and I think that's what rings true, is that, that that feeling of not knowing if hope is gonna come, and then someone like Brian Stevenson, who's been so eloquent in this, in, in, in this whole uh, journey, to see it play out like, you've, like we've seen it. It's hard not to um, cry. It's hard not to cheer. And um, it's just been, I mean, like I said, I've just been honored to be uh, in this. And I hope this will change the narrative of how we see folks and how you see people. And, and Destin, I think you did a fantastic job with this because we tell these stories a lot, but to get it right is really something. So be proud tonight, and thank you so much for enjoying it. Thank you. We, we are a little short of time, so I do just want to open it up to you for a couple of questions uh, in the audience and for anybody up on stage, a remarkable cast of actors who contributed to telling this story. If you've got a question, I can take just a couple of them and then we're gonna have to, to wrap it up. Yes, let's go over here, please. Go ahead. Thank you. The, um, thank you. The, the question is about uh, how can people support the ongoing work you're doing? I promise I did not ask her to ask that question. Uh, uh, but thank you so much for that. I mean, we are in the midst of a major struggle. We are trying to do something about the fact that the U.S. has the highest rate of incarceration in the world, that one in three black males is expected to go to jail or prison, that we're putting people who are sick in jails and prisons when they need health care. But to change that, we're going to have to change this larger narrative. We want to do something about this history of racial inequality. Uh, we are both in Canada and in America in spaces where there was a native genocide and we haven't talked about it and it created this legacy where we've had slavery and lynching and segregation and abuse and discrimination and that's why we built that museum. We've opened a museum called the Legacy Museum from enslavement to mass incarceration and we built something called the National Memorial for Peace and Justice and I want to invite everybody to come to Montgomery and to stand with us in those spaces and you are invited to support the work that we are doing. We now have a huge staff of people that are going out into the world and they're finding the other Walter McMillans and the other Anthony Ray Hintons and they're all over the world and we've got to fight for them. And yes, we invite your support. We ask for your support. There's so many things we can all do 
to make a difference. And uh, we have a website, eji.org. We're actually coordinating with a lot of people uh, to make information accessible so that when people leave theaters, they'll know exactly where they can go to join efforts in reentry, to support organizations that are helping folks in this country and countries around the world. And for us, that's really important. Because we didn't really, I didn't write the book to entertain. I, and I don't think anybody on this stage made this movie to entertain. We want to create a more just society. And that happens when people who see the story respond. So thank you for proposing that. Thank you for affirming the importance of that. Because for us, that's the critical next step when you see a story like Just Mercy. Thank you. All right. We're going to take one more. There's somebody over here. You waving your hand. Go ahead. Okay, the, the, the question is about how can we get the message out to young people? Uh, we're losing more of our young people. How can we uh, engage them and get the message out? Well, I, you know, I, I think it's when incredible, talented performers like this, who young people look up to, uh, step into these kinds of roles. We open some doors. I want to tell you what happened when... Jamie and Michael came to Alabama to prepare for the roles. They went to the sites. It was uh, just preparatory work. It was about 99 degrees. And uh, they were doing some work. And Michael drove by a school we have in Montgomery for young black kids, many of them marginalized, many of them disfavored. And a group of people have been working with the young people in our community to inspire them. And Michael drove by and he saw all of these kids out in the middle of the day doing jumping jacks. And he stopped his driver, he told the driver to go back, and he went over to these young kids and just watched them erupt in joy. They'd never seen anything like that. It went viral, that video. That wasn't in the script, that wasn't part of the plan, but he inspired those young kids. And every time I talk to anybody from that school, they ask me, when is Just Mercy coming out? When is Michael B. Jordan coming back? When is Jamie Foxx coming back? <laughs> And the truth is, is that, that talented, incredible people like this have platforms that, that young people pay attention to. And they're using their talent and platform to send a message about what we need to do to change our justice system, the problems of inequality. And for me, that is so important. Uh, those young kids will never forget what he did for them. Never. And they're now mobilized and energized to follow that. And we can all do that. You don't have to be Michael B. Jordan, although it helps when you're Michael B. Jordan <laughs> uh, to get some young people excited. But that's the kind of stuff that I've seen everybody do. And there are all kinds of folks on this stage that are doing their incredible work. But it's all about uh, energizing a generation of people that come behind us to think differently about tolerating inequality. And I think we can do it. I've seen it happen. Uh, but it's, it's with talented people like this doing what they do that I think we begin to create a new relationship to our young people. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Karen, you just wanted to say something? Thank you. Um, when I was a kid, my older cousin was incarcerated. He is named after my father, my dad and his dad are brothers. And for 24 years, eight months, I would receive phone calls, our family did, letters, keychains, but I never went to visit. After working on this film and after learning more about Brian Stevenson and his work, this work changed me. And when we wrapped, since we've wrapped, I've been twice. And I say that, I say that to say this, this work forced me 
to realize that no one can do everything, although I feel like Brian Stevenson is close. <laughs> but everyone can do something. And it forced me to ask and answer the question, what is your something? What is your something? My something was showing up. It was being present. It was not easy. It was not convenient. In another state, it was not cheap. It was necessary, and it was my something. And so, first of all, I stand in gratitude to Mr. Stevenson and everyone on this stage. And I charge each of us who have had this collective experience now to ask and answer, what is my something? Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. We're going to have to wrap it, unfortunately. We are out of time, but I want to just please ask you to join me in thanking Karen Kendrick, O'Shea Jackson, Tim Blake Nelson, Rob Morgan, Jamie Foxx, Brie Larson, Michael B. Jordan, Brian Stevenson, and Destin Daniel Cretton. The film is just mercy. Thank you.